he just sees us standing over there. We were overlooking because they had the World Cup coming up. So we were looking at the stadium. Yep. Remember? So Pat comes down like, hey, guys, you know that? Dude comes out with the AK speaking in, in Portuguese. Da, 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 da. Pat's like, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, no, no, please. Don't, don't kill us. <laughs> He's scared. Pat is sitting like, oh, my God. A uh, glass of champagne. He was like, we, I saw D. Grant just looking at him, and I was like, oh, God, he's about to drink it. We talk about people getting checked. What was the first time that you had that experience or that moment to where you knew it was a validating experience for you in the NFL and you knew this is my moment, this is where I belong, and I'm here to stay. I'm leaving when I say it's time to leave. Let's go behind the mask. We are back for another edition of the Behind the Mask podcast. I'm your host, Takeo Spikes, and I'm with my co-host. Your favorite plus-size model, Tuton Ray, is in the building. Boom! And we got another special guest. Oh, man. Man, y'all give it up for my dog, our dog. Super Bowl champion, since this is the month where championships or champions are made, Super Bowl champion, Dion Grant. Yeah! In the building. Jeezy. <laughs> What's going on, fella? What's good, fam? Man, just cool. By the time you came through. Man, thank y'all for inviting me, man. <laughs> so, you know, I feel special. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, bro. Stop it. You, you be traveling all the time. You... East Coast, West Coast, up north, down south. Uh, we appreciate the time you've given us on the podcast, man. And since it is championship month, uh, first week into the playoffs, um, what any team that really stands out to you who you feel like maybe could be a team of destiny since you've had, what, two outings with the Super Bowl, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Your, your rookie year and then, hell, your, what, your last year, right? Yep. Hold on, let me get right to it. Man. Not the rookie, it was a third. Yeah, the yeah third, my third. Third, third, fourth. I missed my whole rookie year because I broke my hip. That's right. Yeah. You, you. That's right. Just let me catch everybody up. Twelve year veteran. Mm-hmm. Played with the got drafted with Carolina. Uh, took his talents to Jacksonville. Then he decided to go out west with the Seattle Seahawks. And then he brought it back to the New York Football Giants, where he finally. Got that Super Bowl championship ring. Fun fact, a lot of people don't know this. You know, we play this game for so many years, and we want to get that Super Bowl ring. Listen, he had an opportunity to have two. Yeah. <laughs> two. Then, <laughs> but this is like, you know how some people are just highly, like, blessed and favored? Yeah. This man got a championship on every, every level, level he competed at. Every level. Like every level, I'm talking about even going down to Pop Warner, right? Yeah. Take yeah. us, take us to him though. Um, you know, start off Pop Warner. Let me tell you the crazy part about the Pop Warner. So the neighborhood I stayed in we was good, but our coaching wasn't on point. So I actually went to a rival neighborhood. It was two of us. We went to a rival neighborhood. Used to walk. You know, we used to fight this this neighborhood and everything. These projects. So we used to walk over there every day, passing our homies from our neighborhoods and then had to face them. And uh, the guys that I won, that I played with in middle school and high school, they wasn't from my neighborhood, but we actually faced them in the championship game in Pop Warner. Mm. And we ended up coming together and playing on the same team from middle school to high school. They got D1 scholarships also, but um, start off in middle school, I mean, start off in Pop Warner when we went to middle school, um, playing championship on both levels, basketball and football. Mm. And I went in basketball, then went to high school, won the state in high school, went also in basketball, also in the state. Same, same year, year, right? Yep, same right. year. Then went to college and had a couple opportunities to play in the national, but really played in that one because the first one would have been too much. Um, Michigan would have had to lose and we would have had to beat Nebraska in order for us to win that one. So... We got tossed up by Nebraska that first year. <laughs> Came back the second year and won it, and then went to the went to the um, NFL and 
had an opportunity to win with Carolina and took me almost a decade to get back there. Went to the playoff every yeah. team I played with, but took me almost a decade to get back there and win or win it with uh, with the Giants. So it's safe to say if I'm going to Vegas to gamble, which I don't gamble, but I'm probably need to take you though, huh? You know that's my game. Yeah. <laughs> nah, we, we, we don't need to take him. We need to do what he does. <laughs> that's what we need to do. You know that's my game. I like to gamble, so you know I don't gamble on sports, but you know. That's what you're supposed to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we jiving, but how I feel, man, like all of these levels, I mean, just success after success after success, what do you attribute that to? Um, Faith. Faith in, in, in putting in the work. I think the way I was raised and how I grew up, I faced harder things just in the neighborhoods and walking out of my front door. So when it came to competing at the highest level on which level it was against the highest athletes, um, I never turned that down. Um, I say one of the things, though, being in that position, what hurt me is that I didn't work to my full potential because I was probably always taller than um, the safety that was out there, probably was bigger than most of the safeties that was out there, even growing up. So I never worked to my full potential, but you know, it, it was definitely a blessing. I have to say, just grinding and not, you know, not having a father in my life. I never want to disappoint my mom and my two sisters. So I just made sure that I always was the last one when it comes to, you know, standing. Even though I probably didn't put all the work in in between the lines, but when it came to the end, I wanted to be one of the last men standing. And that goes to not only your faith, but your, you know, I give you props, your incredible athletic prowess. You know, people who don't know, may not know, we got a crew, the usual suspects. I always say pound for pound that I'm the best athlete of the crew. Definitely. There this go. This guy <laughs> on his soapbox. But I, I give you your props. And, and tremendous athlete, track, football, could have scholarships or has scholarships for basketball too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had scholarship for basketball. You know, even in high school, man, I played tennis and all. Tennis, Same. track, baseball. Um, even when it came come to the education piece, at, academic, Catholic, honor society. So I want to have my hands in everything that kept me active, kept me out yeah. the street. So I guess, you know, as I got older, I just stayed into even box. I boxed all the way up to my still to now. I don't go to the boxing classes no more, but I box as a little league. I mean, as a kid. All the way up to, I guess, the end of my career playing football. Mm. So, I want to talk about this story. Like, we grew up in the same area. But this was the first I've heard of this man called Dion Grant. Mm. You know, I heard of him. Nice ice, by the way, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, refreshing. Shout to my God, Dio. <laughs> but. That's nice. Hey. The spice go all out. You know that. Nice. Everything you do. Hey man. hey, man, this is nice, man. If I ain't say, oh, go ahead, go ahead, come back. Go ahead, Listen, brother. Listen, I'm not going to pass up. Where's that hardware with the rings, though? I'll bring it back, my brother. We'll, we'll get to that championship rings. But so I'm talking with Terrence, right? Terrence Edwards, Waco legend. My dog. UGA, one of the all time greatest receivers in UGA history. He says, Spikes, Listen, we got Deion Grant coming to the building. You know I got to show out because this boy here, they he said they over there winning championships the same way we're winning championships. Mm -hmm. So I called back the next day. I said, what happened, Doc? They said, man, this boy Deion Grant came down here and broke the damn rim. Mm -hmm. I said, what? I said, he... He ain't a D-line. He ain't heavy. <laughs> they was like, they said he gave it to us every which way he could. Yeah. But Terrence said in the end, though, I had to drop him off for 30. So I can't remember, maybe 35 or something like that. Man, it felt like 55. <laughs> T was hot. Yeah. But that was the first time of me, like, getting that clear indication, like, man, this boy hit. This boy good. Yeah, he's serious. He's serious, though. But, like, bro, like, when we fast forward and we look at all the accomplishments of what you've done, uh, all, all of what you do to give back, what drives you every day? You know, you do so much. Like, very rarely that somebody can say they see you two times in, in three consecutive days. You know what I mean? So I say, I say that to say, like, 
because you move around so much and you're always having your hands in something, what drives you every day to keep you motivated? Um, I know as, as a youngster, I always said, you know, I seen how my mom struggled and um, how she worked so hard to provide for the three of us, my two sisters and myself. And I can recall times when she probably had 40, 40, well, I know, I know exactly one particular time always stick out in my mind. She had $40 to last us for after all the bills and everything was paid. And we was on, I think we had just got off WF at the time. And she had like $40 to last us for a month. Pardon me. She had like $40 to last us for a month. And um, some kind of way she, she, she managed to make it happen. And I had to go out there and eat at other people's houses and all the other stuff. But I always put in my mind that if I'm going to be responsible, I want to make sure that since we didn't have a father that my two sisters, they had somebody to look up to. So that's one of the reasons why I never got into alcohol. Because if I had to make a decision knowing that I already was walking out the door and had to fight every day, that I wanted to be in my right frame of mind if I had to make a decision. And I said, I always want to put my mom and my two sisters in a position that they never had a want for the rest of their life. So once I got in a position where I started making money and got into the NFL and everything else and made sure that they were straight, I had a daughter. So it went to that. And then I got a foundation in. I just seen how I was when I was a kid that I want them other kids that was the underprivileged kids not to go through the same thing that I was going through. So every opportunity that I have to help somebody out, I try and make sure that I reach back out and give and that just keep my drive going. I talk about your foundation, man. I mean, I, we we know the charitable works that you've been doing over the years. We support each other. I always say support who supports you. Um, so talk a little bit more about that in detail. Well, it's a... Um, it's a 501c3, you know, giving back to the the underprivileged you community. We do book scholarships. We do scholarships. We do donated computers to different schools. Um, we do the turkey giveaway every year between here, Augusta, and, and New York and Jersey. Yeah. Um, we do toy drives. You know, sometimes we just help families out. You know, sometimes when I see, um, for an example, I have a homeboy that's, and this don't have anything to do with my foundation per se, but I have a homeboy that I met, not anybody that we grew up with, but I met along the line, and he was a stand-up guy and got into a bad situation, so he had to go and do some time. So his sister, I mean his sister, his daughter, doing pretty good in school. She was in a band and doing a lot of dancing and everything else, and they just didn't have the fun to pay for the classes and the uniforms and everything else, so I just took it in as one of the mentorship programs that we have with the foundation, um, she didn't go through all the parameters that you have to go through as for signing the proper paperwork, but I took in because I like what she was doing and I knew her father. And I just made sure that when it came to the band stuff, the dance stuff, long she kept, she kept the right um, GPA mm. that all that stuff was paid for. So that's the main thing our foundation focus on, you know, just trying to make sure that the the playing field is even, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to the ones, the less fortunate and the fortunate ones. So I try and do as much as I could as for, as for what God put on my plate. Looking at, uh, and that's the Grant D. Knowledge Foundation. Yes. Right. Can you let everybody know where they can find out more information on that? Um, right now we're revamping the website. It should be up probably within the next two weeks, but it's, um, you know, the Grant Grant D. Knowledge Foundation. I just call it Grant Foundation for short. Greatness requires all necessary tools. Um, I think the social, you know, I'm not a big social media guy, but I think social media is GDK Foundation. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, uh, and the website is gdkfoundation.org. So, and any in information, my, my executive director, her name's Angel. She runs everything. So, if you can't get in contact with her, you always can reach out to me. Sure. All right, so, bro, you, you do a lot of things to affect a lot of people, but, like, I like the way you roll. I like I love the way that you played the game. And even going back, we go back to the SEC championship game when Auburn Tigers met the Tennessee Volunteers. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious. <laughs> Peyton Manning was the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, we ended up losing by one point, but it's probably 
it's one of the greatest SEC games that were ever played. I remember looking back, man, and I and I just look back at all the guys who you played with. And I remember Rodney Garner, D-line coach now at Auburn, but he brought me to Auburn, left and went to Tennessee, actually came and got started with your class. Mm-hmm. Al Wilson, Leonard Little, Cozy Coleman, um, Steve Smith. Uh, Chad Clifton. Uh, Steve, not Steve Smith, but uh, uh, Steve, um, the corner. He played corner. Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson. Yeah. You want me, you want me to go yeah, through? Yeah, you run it. You run it. Yeah. Down. Yeah, you run it. We had, um, from the D-line standpoint, we had Big John Henderson. We had um, Sean Ellis. Big Cat. Will Overstreet. Um, Jonathan Brown. Leonard Little, Darren Walker, uh, Albert Hainsworth, Big Hainsworth, yeah. Al Wilson, Ray Not Tump, you, um, Fair, yeah, yeah I didn't talk about myself. Um, Wasn't it Fair there too? Yeah, we had Terry yeah. Fair. We had, uh, oh yeah, in that game Terry was still there. there. Yeah. We had um, Fred White. Peerless, the, peerless, peerless price. price. I was just going on defense. Oh, okay. That was just defense, you know, and it's Deep still more talent. Yeah, it was. It's still. You know what though? When we played in the SEC championship game, um, Albert Hainsworth wasn't there. They came the next year, mm. so I take I take him and Big John out. But all them other guys, um, Westmore, we had Westmore also. Dominic Steven Westmore. Yep. So we had all them guys. Andre Lott. And then you go to the other side, we had Marcus Nash. Mm-hmm. We had Peerless Price. We had Andy McCullers. We had – now, I want to stop for a second and just point this out because a lot of people sleep on They give it to Miami with all the running backs come from Miami. But at one time, we had – Three, yeah. We had Travis Stevens, mm-hmm. Jamal Lewis, Travis Henry, um, the one that went to Oregon, played for Minnesota. Blunt? Oterio Smith. No, I know what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> we had Oterio Smith. We had um, Dominique Stevens. He won Mr. South Carolina as a running back. We had five running backs. At, oh, no. Sean Bryson. Bryson, yep. First rounders. Mm-hmm. First, first, second rounders. We had all them guys at one time. And them kids, they were leaving school early just yeah. because they knew the next yes, guy was coming right. behind them. Yes. Right. That's right. Yes. Then we, go, then we had Peyton Manning, T. Martin. Um, uh, Chad Clifton, Cozy Coleman, you Trey know, T. Trey, yeah, we had so all these guys. When you look at all that, when I look at all of that talent, I got one question to ask you because it's very rare that you get teams assembled like that. I want to know how much was the bag they gave all of y'all? <laughs> Tennessee ain't no way in hell. They ain't been a- good old Rocky top. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Tennessee always had that type of talent. You think about it when Dale Carter then was there, when Dale, Chuck Smith, Carl Pick, and all them boys. Same thing they had. It's just the SEC was so stacked back yeah. in them days like that. So that's why they never can beat the Alabamas back in them days. You know? But if we got the bag, what kind of bag did y'all get? Because on the field, <laughs> let's talk about what y'all had on the field that same year when we played y'all in the SEC. Go now, you run through yours. We just had a bunch of guys. No, <laughs> <laughs> you had the Beasley, the Spikes. You could go on and on. Yeah. You know, as far as the guys that was on the field Damian from both Craig. teams, Damian, man, mm-hmm. it was it was so stacked on that field as far as guys that actually made it to the next level. I just looked back at it, looked back at it one time and just called Spike. It was probably like what one o'clock in the morning. Yep. And I was like, cuz, you know how many people we had on the field at one time in the SEC championship game? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It was special. And our competition goes from high school to college to the pros, but that's your brother. Was there any ever was there ever any point where you was like, you know what? I just gotta make sure that we, we just stomp on this one time bragging rights when we get back to the crib. You know what's so crazy? No. Every time we played against him, every time we played against him, if he was in Buffalo, Philly, San Fran, even since, and I got a funny story about Cincinnati and him and and, and Chad Johnson. Mm -hmm. Funny story. But um, 
I think I had more of that when I played against Jamal than I did to kill. Mm. Um, we always had fun when I used to see him. We probably was on spe- neither one of us p- played special team like that. Mm. Uh, so when we was on special team together, you know, we look across, and nine times out of ten we was winning. So, <laughs> <laughs> he out there, he out there dancing. It's a kickoff. I'd be like, dog, that shit used to make me so mad, dog. I used to go tell them boy, you better not let D. Grant get a tap. <laughs> Oh, you better yoke him up and put him on the sideline. <laughs> so, no, it, it never was like that, man, because I know my brother was going through it. He was having a hell yeah, of a career. rough years. Yeah, he was hell having a, career, a hell, but some rough hell of a career, but <laughs> rough, rough years. So, I couldn't really brag, I couldn't really rub it in because I know what he was going through. You know, he, he, he took more pride into that football and yeah. making sure that he was on that level than I did. And I, I can, I don't mind saying that, humbly speaking. He definitely took more pride in than I did, even in the off season. Mm. I probably used to show up to the workouts towards the end of the workout when it's time to go to training. You were just hoop. You you were hoop and box. Hoop you ain't never box. really come never. lift weights and train. That was your your whole spiel right there. Yeah, and it paid. I paid for it. <laughs> yeah. When I broke that hip, that hip wasn't strong enough, you know, and I paid for it. So I learned after that. But um, no, I never, I never, um, never was a game. It never was a game. That uh, I played against Bro and say, you know, this for the bragging rights. But we never talked about us playing against each other as far as on a competitive level. Mm-hmm. We talked about the games, but we never talked about it on a competitive level. So, what's that, Chad? Chad, oh, man. Ocho story. Chad is probably the funniest <laughs> guy that I ever played with. So, when Cincinnati played Carolina and O something, you had to be on the team too. So, I went to the hotel the night before mm-hmm. to see Bro. And I had and gave Lisa, his sister, and, and everybody some tickets, gave him better seats or whatever. Mm-hmm. So Chad came down. Now, we politic. I knew Chad. We had him playing a couple of basketball games and all that beforehand. So he's just like, D-boy, I'm telling you, tomorrow just don't be helping them cornerbacks. I'm a doing man. You know, Chad's probably, <laughs> you know, one of the best receivers to ever yeah. play, you know. And uh, the day of the game, you know Mike Minner. Yeah. Mike Minner is a guy that – he was probably what by five eight, yeah, five yeah. eight, five nine. Was a head hunter, would knock your block off, mm-hmm. but he never cursed. He would, he would, he would n word you to death now. Yeah. But he, he never <laughs> cursed. <though. laughs> <laughs> one, 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 that makes one, feel yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of them, one of them old school Nebraska cats would knock your block off. Yeah. So Chad, they going off the field. Now we standing here. Chad, them was warming up down here, but they lock is they have to pass us to get back to their locker before the game starts. So after warm ups, Chad walking by, he caught eyes with me and like, D, loud, D, don't help these MFs, don't help these MFs. I'm telling you, leave me one on one. But he's talking to me now. I'm where that camera is at, is at, and this is Chad. So as he's talking to me, he's going backwards towards his locker room. Mike Men is actually behind him, don't see him, because Mike <laughs> is looking this way at the quarterback or whatever. So when he bumped Mike, he talking to us like, D, I'm telling you, I'm a doing man. Don't, don't, don't help these mother effers and all the other stuff. Watch me. One on one, I'm kill him. And he bumped Mike. And he turned around like, boy, well, you Mr. Mike Miller. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, oh, you Mr. Mike Miller, you hit too hard. I apologize. And walked around, man. It was the funniest, like, Mike, you know, once he get, Mike is one of the guys, when he get in there. Yeah, he locked in. He, he locked yeah. in. He yeah. had, it broke him. It broke him. He was like, because Mike did, I, I'm, you know what, I didn't tell the whole story. Mike was like, hey, excuse me, y'all. This how I feel. <laughs> That's what Mike said to him when he bumped. Hey, this how I feel. He turned around like, what? Oh, you Mr. Mike, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, it was the funniest it was and throughout the career, man. Every time we played Chad, man, it was times on the field where I had to lock in because that boy would come to me, man, and try to get me not to hit him. Yeah. So when it came, we had I don't know if y'all remember Brian Russell that played for Cleveland. Yeah. He was in the same division with y'all. He hated Chad. Mm. So when we got to Seattle together, when we got to Seattle together, he tried to knock Chad head off every every chance to get because of them playing, you know, in Cleveland, Seattle in that same division. And one time they came up that TJ Hoos was on the team with Chad. It was that year. And um, um, Brian caught Chad one time. Chad came up to me. He was like, dude, man, you, y'all going to let him stay on the field like that? I'm like, what you talking about? You didn't hear him just call a man 
like, man, that that man <laughs> call you know Chad, man, chill out. But he would do stuff like that, man, to try and soften it up. Yeah. For he couldn't really feel it. So, you know, I take my hat off the bro, man, but he was probably the funniest. But that incident when when um Spikes them came to Carolina, man, probably is the funniest incident I probably experienced on game day. All right, so we here at Behind the Mask, we do an excellent job of sharing stories that have yet to be told. Now, we heard you earlier say, you know what, because of my circumstances and where I wanted to go, I don't drink. Listen, I can attest to that. But this one time in Miami, <laughs> it was on your birthday. I was like, D. Grant, we going to Miami. We're going to have a good time. And we ended up, I think they were like, you know what, we want to bring some champagne over, something. So I was mm -mm. like, all right, let's do it. Mm -mm. Was it the shots or the champagne? Mm -mm. It was the champagne. <laughs> it was the champagne. But that ain't what happened, though. <laughs> Keo do so much, he be forget. You want me to tell the story? Tell the story. Then. So <laughs> let me tell you how special your brother is, right? Uh -huh. So first, I think I was at the house chilling. Like, this time, I'm standing on the south side. And... um. It's like, bro, meet me at the airport. Meet me at the airport, but park the car because I'm going to need you to help me with my bag. So I didn't have any clothes. So I went and parked the car. Bro had, just got me airplane ticket, all this other stuff to Miami. Didn't nice. know where we were staying at, so when we got there, I had to go shopping and all that. But he had then surprised me um, in Miami. Yeah. Now, this is like early 2000s. I think I was probably, what, 22? I'm like fresh in the league. Mm -hmm. I'm like fresh in the league. So, um, we flew down to Miami. He had the big boy uh, condo, I think. Who had the condo down? Robert? Robert. Yeah. Yep. Had a tough condo off the water. So, we staying at the condo. And uh, we get, I still don't know what we're doing. So, we get the club bed. Mm. This when bed was yeah, bed cracking. Was yeah, this one bed was Pumping. cracking. I mean, we get out. So we outside. We got John, Sally, all these other people going in. I can't say John was in line, but the line was crazy. We walk right to the front. I'm like, oh, sh. Green now, line. you know me. I, I clubbing, on, clubbing on that level other than Atlanta Lives and the 112 that was in Atlanta, but going outside the States, that was never me. Mm. So I'm looking at it. I'm like, boy, we going to have to wait in this line. So we walk into the front. I'm like. Keo got some pull. Got yeah. some juice, right? <laughs> he got some pull, right? So we get inside. We got our own little VIP sex, our own bed. Yeah, yeah. Now, the bed had, this is why I said that ain't right. It had crystal going around the middle of the bed. And then it had like the hard alcohol. I don't drink, so I didn't know what it was. But I know I, it was the crystal mm. going around the bed, bottles of them. So all the beds is full. I think it was Tequio, uh, one of our other homeboys, and myself at the time. It was nobody in our bed. It was just us three. Yeah, you know Club Bed if you ain't got nobody in there. Oh, you, man. You, you rhyming on a whack beat. You know what Bro, I'm saying? Bro, <laughs> if you blink three times, our bed was full with people. Man. You blink three times. Our bed. I don't know where they came from, how it happened. I just know we had a lot of people in the bed. So, I me feeling it. I grab a bottle of Cristal <laughs> out of all things a person never drunk before. Right, right. I grab a bottle of Cristal, so a dude was looking like hard, like mean mugging us, like mean mugging. So I see him in front of our bed, mean mugging. You know me, I might be quiet, but that's one thing that's yeah. a pet peeve of mine. Right. So I'm approach the situation. So I see him mean mugging. I'm like, Let me grab this bottle. I pop it off. Like, what you mean mugging for, man? Have a drink. <laughs> Hold the drink in his cup. He start partying with her. Me feeling it, I turned it up. <laughs> one time, I called Earl. Or oh, for one? I called Earl, Tony, Tanya, <laughs> everybody in the restroom. In the restroom, I call every. I'm done. Dizzy, I'm done, Took bro. Took a double go. Yes. Are you serious? Listen, he was done so bad. Or oh, for one He was drink? like, I'm going to need to go to the bathroom. I was like, I was like, damn, it's been like three, four minutes. You had it you Let me go ahead and see what's going on. Man, I walk around the corner. He looked like who done it in how? Trying to fight. Trying, trying to, to fight. fight everybody in the restaurant. Man, it was bad, man. Yeah. Just gone. Bad. I'm fried. talking about gone fried. <laughs> Extra crispy. 
now, I remember, now, after that, I came back out. Fell asleep on the bed. I'm knocked out. <laughs> All I know, this female got a washcloth, a wet washcloth, and she's, like, trying to calm me down because I'm, yeah. I'm sick at this point. She putting a washcloth on my head. I, I wake up. While the club's still going on, I wake up. <laughs> we go to an after-party joint now. Uh. I do not remember nothing about the after party other than we walked in, going down the stairs, and that's all I remember. Mm. You want me to continue going? You want me to continue? Or you yeah, want me to start no, right no. Now? Go ahead and go. You sure? Go ahead and go. You know we got situations now, so you sure you want me to continue? <laughs> well, this was a long listen, time ago. Listen, yeah. listen, listen. T- the only rule on the Behind the Mask podcast is there are oh, no, no rules. rules. Say no more. Say no more. So, so <laughs> after that. Some kind of way we got back to the condo. The condo wasn't on South Beach. Mm. I think the South condo was probably in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, right before Lauderdale. Right before Lauderdale. So that's a good look. I have no idea how we got there. <laughs> no idea. But I can tell you, when we woke up, it was Takeo, a girl, a girl, and me <laughs> in the bed together. Bruh. What? I woke up and I look, I woke up before everybody. Because I probably got more arrested there because I was sleeping <laughs> in, the, out. in the club. I woke up and I look. I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I go to the restroom and just wash my face. And I'm just looking at myself in the mirror like, what just happened? <laughs> but uh, we had all our clothes on. Okay, though, okay. I think. <laughs> no, we had we, we, we had all we had all our clothes. If memory on, serves but, me correctly. Yeah, we had all our clothes on, but the fact that we we woke up in a whole different place of yeah. Miami in a bed with two beautiful young ladies wow. that you know we was real young back in them days, <laughs> and um, thank y'all for making sure we got back safe. Which is dope is pre social media, so we yes. ain't you know yes. yeah. But you know, it, it was saving. Then we we had another homeboy. You know, we can't talk. We're not gonna tell his name. But the, <laughs> the stuff that he did that 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 next morning was so funny. It was so, so funny. Foul. Yeah, wow, man, stay. so foul. But that was a perfect. That's probably one of my best birthdays. Definitely one of my best <laughs> birthdays because I was surprised. I don't get. I don't do surprise yeah. parties and all the other stuff. I get surprised and really don't be expecting nothing on yeah. days like that. But um. That was one day where somebody did something for me, and it was a priest of, and I always, you know, to the day that I die, I always take my hat off and have my brother back for that. For sure. For oh, we sure. had we had a ball, and you know what the thing? It was two. It was two things that I remember that night that really just stood out. What really just turned it up to a next level. After you poured Buddy a, a glass of champagne, he was like. We, I saw D. Grant just looking at him, and I was like, oh, God, he's about to drink it. He threw it back. I was like, fuck it, give me a shot. So everybody got a shot, dog. Everybody. But that led to the next morning. For, like, bro, it was like a hangover before hangover. Man. Yeah, man. It was like. Yeah, man. When you know, <laughs> even even though we might wasn't doing the godly thing at the time, but when they said when you walk in faith, it follows you. It definitely follows that night because we went all over Miami and man, and we safe, wasn't yeah. just on South Beach and we got back home safe and yeah. woke up in the bed and we had all our jewelry and money and clothes mm-hmm. and um, uh, you know, I don't think we slept with them young ladies because all unless they put our clothes back on. Us, <laughs> but I know. When I went to the health department, uh, you know, I was straight. I know my brother was straight. So oh, hey. God protect. <laughs> hey. And I'm not saying we did now, but if we did, if we, did. we were straight after the fact. <laughs> That's faith. Oh, so man. thank you, God. Thank you the most high. I, I, I tell you this, though. That was a great story. But I remember this time, like, this was that story too. I think you can refresh me on this on the on the Rio. Oh man, we, we took what's a, Rio? We took a, a a big group. Yeah, group group trip down to Rio. It was Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Oh, Brasilia. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, we went down. There. I had I had just got divorced. I was out the league, and then I had never been. So I'm like, let's, me neither. Let's yeah. So we like let's you know round up the troops. Let's get together and go. Me, you, uh, us three, Pat Willis, 
and my brother Ray. Yeah. Carlos couldn't come. He was pissed as hell. Yeah. You to, know this what I'm Carlos <laughs> <laughs> to this day. Carlos still. To this day. To this day. Yeah, I know me. I'm frugal, but I don't like to spend no money. So you guys had the, uh, you guys paid for y'all <laughs> ticket, and I went on like a, a buddy pass or some shit. You know, it was a stay by or something. So I get the pass, and I get on the flight. It's all good. Gave my brother my sky mile so he could ride. He's up in first class with all of y'all. <laughs> I look at my ticket. I'm in the back by the toilets on this, what, 10-hour flight to Rio. You was, yep. you was um, working in the bathroom. Was, <laughs> <laughs> Basically. You know what I'm saying? So we on the flight. I'm pissed at y'all because none, none of y'all check on me the entire flight. <laughs> we sent some food back from first class. Though. Yeah, I did. Now, but, whether or not if it made it, yeah, it's not all. Yeah. So we, <laughs> we did. Well, we get down there. Obviously, you know, we go down there and get the blessing, go see Christ the Redeemer. Remember, I said the first thing we go do, you see the statue. This way, whatever else happens on the trip, we cover it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Great time, nonstop, about day four, we down there. And I remember Takio. Pat and my brother Ray, y'all tapped out. So me to the point I our driver, we was remember Benny, we we down looking outside the window like, yo, Benny, we coming out. Benny looked up like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> By the time we made it downstairs, our driver was gone. We had him on a 24 hour yep. call, but he was gone because the only people that still went out was me and Dion. Yep. But the the funny story that I remember is uh Spikes, I think, was like, or Dion was like, yo, let's go ahead, let's go to the hood. You know who it was. Yeah, yeah. He was like, let's go to the hood. It's Rancina. It's one of the worst uh, favelas at the time in Brazil. So To this we, day. To this day. One yeah. way in, one way one out. Way in, All one way the way up, up the mountain. Yeah, up the mountain. So we about to go, and, and Spikes is like, shit, I'm down. Ray like, I'm down. DG like, shit, I'm from the hood. I'm with it. I'm like, I'm from the hood, too. I'm like, what's the worst could happen? They're like, just follow the rules, and you'll be all right. Pat Willis is like, Oh man, I don't want to go up there, man. I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna go up there. So we got armed security, man. we got armed security with us, and even the armed security is like uh, the off-duty cops are like, we don't want to go up there. We like, why? Y'all told us the rules. We just go follow the rules. They was like, their guns are big. No, ours are small. No, too. No. So I brought it up. I said, hey, man. We got to go to these villas, man. Right. I keep on, I got to go and record this, take this back to the hood. But so they Pat, said you weren't supposed to record. record. Yes. Yeah. So Pat was like, man, I'm not going up in there. I'm like, so he looking at Takeo for validation because he was titled with black. Right, so, right. So Takeo was like, man, you know, bro, I want to go in there. So I'm like, man, y'all can stay at the bottom then. I'm going We're going to go up, right. So we got that. The only way you can really go up is you got to get pulled up the motorbikes. And they wouldn't let me get on the motorbike because yes. I was too big. <laughs> too big. So this the crazy part. This the crazy part. When we get there, we see these guys, these um officers with AR rifles mm -hmm. and all the, at the bottom. At the bottom, yeah. At the bottom, and I'm like, okay, it's about to be real gangster. So we got our security, you know, they armed and they said, no, we're not allowed to, not that yeah. we, we can't go. And they got, he said, we're not allowed to go. And they do not allow police to come up in there. Yeah. As far as the people that run that neighborhood, yeah, I'm like they run the hood. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be by ourselves. So it changed to me wanting to catch all this on film. Like, okay, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go up in this joint. Now daylight. Yeah, we was good going up. Daylight, it was so beautiful. You got the little kids on the side playing soccer, soccer and everything yeah. else. They got the best view. Now it's over. It's like three hundred thousand people in this in this villa standing yeah. on top of each other. Mm -hmm. That's the part that a lot of people missed out. Like like a week before, they had just shot the police helicopter down. Right. Yep. They had just shot it down, and um, they had the news that some kind of way got up in there and Trying they to do filmed the expose, it. Yeah, yeah, and filmed it. So it was against all cameras. So when we <laughs> Pat still shook. So it hit night. It was so beautiful going up, but. When you were driving up and coming down, we didn't see it going up, but when we came down, it was dark. Mm -hmm. It and was like, let's got, get up out of here. Yes, we got guys pulling up on side of us on the mopeds. With the ARs and like, the AKs. If they lean a little bit, they're going to touch us. And they can pull, like we getting pulled on the bikes, but they got AR 15s, AK 47s, everything. <clears throat> and every other light. Every other light going down these roads, you got you got regular civilians Soldiers. with yeah. with AKs and AR just standing on the corners in their position. I'm like, how did this transform? Shit about like to get that? real. <laughs> yes, how did this transform like that? So we end up stopping. We end up stopping anyway, 
and saw this guy smoking, and we got to talking. I'm recording like a clown. After they don't told, told us not to damn do. record. I'm just recording like a fool, and I still got that footage for us too, y'all. So I'm just recording. He's like, no, you got to put that down. But I don't know his language. So we had a translator also. So he telling us everything. He said, no, D, put that down, man. Yeah. You might not make it out of here if yeah. you don't put it down. So I covered the red button real quick. Mm-hmm. I covered the red button, but I'm still hearing every conversation and still looking at all the stuff. And he just telling like, it might be a sniper over yeah. there in that yeah. building. And that it's probably one of the wildest things I've ever seen from a poverty standpoint. But the crazy part is that we all had the same... Warnings going up the mountain, then it got dark. We coming back down when the situation happened, but it was f- six bites going up because we had Benny with us. Yeah, and coming down, Pat Willis, best linebacker in the league at the time, toughest man in the NFL. So sure, he was so scared. He's coming back down the mountain, but his bike is last. Yes, yeah, so he doesn't get the memo <laughs> that Dion got saying cover the camera up. He just sees us standing over there. We were overlooking because they had the World Cup coming up. So we were looking at the stadium. Yep. Remember? So Pat comes down like, hey, guys, you know that? Dude comes out with the AK speaking in, in Portuguese. Da, 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 da. Pat's like, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, no, no, please. Don't, don't kill us. He's, he's scared. Pat just sitting like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Then he starts talking to him in Portuguese. He's like, no, these are Americans. These are gringos. Like, just let him go. The dude is like, get the fuck out. Get out, That yo. was so shit, man. <laughs> Hey, look, I, hey, look, I am about to just say that. I don't think Pat forgave me for that ever since that I took him up in there because Pat, we speak, but Pat still be looking at me kind of shady from that situation, man. He was so shook, man. That was the funnest day. He thought that was his last day. Yeah, he did. He, he thought did. that was his last day living. Hilarious, man. Oh, my goodness, man. Yeah, that's a good one, man. We can't talk too much about Brio, but I meant Rio. Yeah, Rio was dope, though. Yeah. Like he was. Rio was dope. He, um, two times got married again over there. He, he just. Got <laughs> <laughs> I ain't getting married. I was just, you know. I was, yeah, no, that's what we keeping it. Yeah, we just, that's what I'm saying. I ain't getting married. We can't talk about had, nothing No, no, else. no. We had we had a fine system. Remember that? We was like, if anybody, um, what was it? If anybody sees uh, sees a girl and winds up, if you see, if you're seen with a girl twice. You got to pay the whole crew because that's not that's not what we here for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't seen twice with her. Okay, that's I, all we can talk about. <laughs> that's all we you can just talk trying about. to make sure you you weren't trying to stay <laughs> over there. You turned into <laughs> Brazil too. Yeah. Brazil, yeah. Yeah, that's all we can. It talk was about it was good there. times though. It was, it good was times, a great man. time. I seen y'all had my, my 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 brother on here, Jamal. J Lou. Yeah. yeah, yeah. J Lou's J Lou's. His story was deep, man. Yeah, you know what I mean, your, your your roommate in college, right? Yeah, yeah. college. You know, last year's in, last year in high school, all American team and all that. Uh, J. Lou won the main reason why I went to Tennessee. All right. So J. Lou gave you the bag too, then. <laughs> now nah, J. Lou, he said he was getting it now. No, nah, I think J. Lou. I think I was I was bigger than J. Lou from a from a um, you know ranking standpoint at that time. I think I was like the number one DB in the country sure. coming out of high school, and J. Lou was probably one of the two top running backs coming out of the state of Georgia is between him and Jasper Saints. And, you know, a lot of places was ranking Jasper over him mm. and he was hot. So he hated Georgia. You know, yeah, he hated yeah. Georgia. And when we, you know, we had just beat Florida, we, neither one of us could stay in Florida at the time. You know, that's when we had that big Georgia-Florida Florida rival, game, yeah. even in the streets, you mm. know, from Miami and Atlanta, the whole war that went on there. So we just hated Florida, period. And uh, we up in Tennessee on a visit. And he just kept talking like, man, forget Georgia, man. You know, we hate Florida. You know, this is a bigger rivalry. You know, as far as the Georgia, Tennessee, Tennessee can't, can't I mean, Florida, Tennessee, Tennessee couldn't bleep, beat Florida at the time. Peyton couldn't beat him. Mm. And Jamal just kept talking like, you know, uh, we could be that team to change that. And he just hated Georgia and being that I had them played in an All American game with him and we had them built a relationship that, uh, you know, I said, I'm a ride with bro. I'm a ride with bro. And Cozy got on the same page. Mm-hmm. Cozy played in all American games. So all of us had to build a good relationship. And that's how we ended up got to Tennessee. But our path was 
similar. You know, when he was going through his little federal situation, I was going through, a lot of people never know that to this day, but I was going through a similar situation with the Fed, and him and I actually had the same lawyer. Oh, so wow. not only that we came in together, we left out early together also, mm-hmm. was roommates, and then had a little situation. I think I had my situation around the same time he did. Yeah, it was the same time because I was on my way to Jacksonville when it happened. Speak and about that a little bit if you can. Which part? The fair situation. Yeah, I just had a little fair situation. <laughs> you know, you know it, it it wasn't, you know, mine wasn't wasn't documented, so I don't even like to touch it. Um, it got thrown out and all the other stuff. So I just leave it like that. Yeah, I think is. I escaped one and but um, you know, I knew about bro situation before it really hit the fan the way it did. But I was just glad that he escaped and he bounced back from yeah. it. I just knew the, the work he had them put in and the conversation we used to have, mm. you know. He was, um. I just remember the conversation we had before our last year. Did we ball like this year? I'm coming out early. Because, mm. you know, I was majoring in engineer. And I don't know what bro major was, but it used to be times when bro them go out to the club and he waking up late and I'm up already 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning getting ready for class and then got to stay in a, you know, study halls after the fact, mm. you know, while they going out because of my major. And I just remember that conversation, like, bro, I got the ball out. I got the ball out because I'm coming out early. So I'm like, so we came in there together. And I think that was our last year's roommates. Mm. It's before our last year. So I said, I got the ball out. I got to get him the ball as many times as I could, get him an opportunity to get as many yards as he could. And I, if I get the interception, that means I could come out early also. So yeah, yeah. that's how that whole situation happened. Bro, so you look at the, the amount of success that you guys had. And then you fast forward, <clears throat> excuse me, when you go through the league and now you get an opportunity um, to really address like this month, championship month. Like, how was it? Because like this is something that a lot of people, I mean, if you really paid attention, you knew. Every year when the season was over with, who was the first person to come back to Atlanta? I was. Yeah. I already knew we wouldn't do- we wasn't even making playoffs. So I know how y'all didn't make it in Buffalo, but go ahead. We always had to sit back and just look at like it was Los. It was either you or Los would be the remaining two out of the crew who would come back home, uh, depending on how far you got. So I, I guess I'm saying you were fortunate enough to play in two Super Bowls, walk away as a Super Bowl winner. Like everything that you've been through. And and trying to sum up what it takes to get through that month of January through the playoffs, uh, is it any parallels, whether or not if it's from focus or just being more committed to when you get into playoff football that propels you to that next level, which is the Super Bowl? Um. Yes. Yes. One thing that I learned when I was in Carolina, and I had the <clears throat> privilege, I had the privilege to experience it on every team I played with. It was being a top five defense. I said, if we the top five defense, we wouldn't have an opportunity to play in the postseason. And I can truly say that every year, I mean, every team I played on was the top five. I was top five defense. If it was, was number one in certain areas, it was definitely top five in Carolina, Jacksonville, Jacksonville yeah. Seattle, and New York, all the way up to my last year. And I went to the, I went in the postseason with every last one of them teams. But the thing that I learned playing with that first team, I'm um, playing with Carolina and establishing that we were so young. Even though we came in with OGs, but we didn't win anything when we had, God bless his soul, Reggie White and the Eric Swans and the Lee Woodalls and the Chuck Smiths and the Eric, Eric Davis and all Doug Evans. Even though we, I came in a league with them guys, when it was the team that went with Rucker, I think Rucker was in his Mike like Ruck. yeah fourth year. Pep third, was in yeah, Pep things. was in his like first or second year. So we had all these young guys, but um, so we didn't know what to appreciate. So we was all over the place when we was in Houston. Even going into the – we just knew that we were special. We get in the mm-hmm. postseason, we're going to kill anybody. So when I moved on to Jacksonville, that was my main focus. We got to establish top five defense as far as creating turnovers and just that intimidation factor. And offense, even if they not clicking, even though we had a good offense with the Fred Taylors and Jones, Drew, and all these other guys, um, we just made sure that we get them the ball as many times and create that – like I said, that intimidation factor from a defense standpoint that we'll be able to make it in the, in the postseason. Just so happened in the postseason in Jacksonville, we ran into Tom Brady. Mm. You know, 
that's when he went on his run. Well, he won his, he started his run the year before yes, when yes, I played sir. in Carolina. <clears throat> uh, then we got to Seattle. It was the same thing. I went to Seattle. I went to Seattle where they was already going to the Super Bowls and everything else. And I just wanted to go and make sure that that was still established as far as making sure we had the top defense. And we got deep and was a game away from playing in the Super Bowl um, in Seattle. And it's the same mentality when I got to New York. So I have to say that was my – but I can tell you one thing that was different with the two Super Bowls I played in. Me having – me playing in Carolina and just trying to last. Every year I was just trying to last with my hip because it was a career-ending injury. So I was just trying to last – and see how many seasons can I play. So I never really thought about, that's why I say I didn't learn that until after I left Carolina. I really wasn't focusing on what I need to focus on when it comes to playing in the postseason. So when we got to Houston on the, in that Super Bowl, mm -hmm. we was making as much money as we could make off the field. Mm -hmm. You know, we was doing as many parts that we could do before curfew started. Mm -hmm. Now, when I played in my last I'm older now, probably the oldest guy on the team. At the, I was the oldest guy at the team at the time. I didn't do any of that. So I really just soaked it in. I got focused. I knew what I needed to focus. I, I didn't get over excited. I got super excited. I was about to fight. Uh, we was about to fight the day of the Super Bowl. And, you know, that's when you're supposed to have as much class because you're talking about the classes event that you can play in from an NFL standpoint. And we were so young that we about to fight New England. I can, I can remember... Um, the linebacker, the one that's on TV now. Brewski? No, not Brewski. McGinnis? Um, McGinnis. I can remember McGinnis <clears throat> looking like, man, y'all calm that shit down. As the OG, mm. y'all calm. And I didn't like him at first because how he was talking to us, and it stuck with me for a long time because they beat us at. And then as I got older, it sucked in like, you know, he was being a real OG because he hadn't been there before. Mm -hmm. So when I was able to experience it again or whenever I played in the play. I was, I, I was able to focus on the most important things about playing in that game. And the second time, it was easy. So yeah. when we came into them pressure situations, we knew I knew exactly how to attack them and how to relax and not to get overexcited. So that's the part when you come to the parallel part um, from the first time I experienced the postseason to the last time I played in the Super Bowl. I have to say that's what I took from Carolina on to the rest of my career. But, Dion, even back in, in Carolina – um, you talk about your two different experiences in the Super Bowl. You still were focused, man. And when I when I got to Carolina in 02, I knew you from Atlanta. You kind of took me under your wing, you know, because you knew the city and everything. But fast forward to 04 or 03, or going into 04, we went to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You my brother, you know. We I used to always ride on a defensive bus because I was cool with y'all, so, and I wasn't playing at the time. So I would kick it with y'all on the bus, you know. High paid spectator. Well paid spectator. I know that's <laughs> you know what I'm part of it. <laughs> um we went to the to the Rockets game. Remember the Rockets played the Kings. We chilling yep. courtside, did yep. our thing. So all of this, you know, I'm, I'm, my agent got us tickets. So, you know, I'm my, my brother. Definitely. But then we go into the we go into practice or something one day on the buses and you know, the whole D line and DB's in the back laughing. I'm back there with them laughing. I guess I'm laughing a little bit too hard. And DG going to say, Tutan, what the fuck you laughing for? I'm like, what you talking about? He's like, shut your ass up. You ain't playing in the game no way. Oh, but, Damn. But load up. When belt. I tell you, when I tell you it hurt so bad, not because it came from him, but because everybody else was laughing. <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? He put me in my place, which which a brother is supposed to do regardless of the situation. So I commend you for that. And that just shows can I'm I still pissed at you. Yes, he is. Yes. <laughs> Look, we talk about this every time we get together. Can I, can I, can I proceed, explain that story? Proceed, proceed. So now, being that I told you how I was from my hip, so when it came to me getting focused for the game, I always was serious. Even though I didn't know how to appreciate or what to be focused on when it came to the Super Bowl itself, but when it came to preparing and practicing and all that, I was always serious. You know, I get my, I put my music on and I'm focused on the bus. So this particular time, we going to practice, and I think somebody wanted to sit down with two. And two went give him the seat, but he on our, but he went he went move <laughs> over because you know 
two as an offensive lineman at the time. Yeah. He went sexy two <laughs> at the time. You know, he had a little bit more size on him. So, you know, two really wasn't trying to give him the seat. I didn't care at as far as that part of it. And then they got loud and started talking about yeah. it. And then they got to joking with each other about the situation. And I could hear it through my music. So me being out and, and two of Taters, I was the young cat on the team that bridged the gap between mm-hmm. the older cats and the younger cats. You know, I had respect from both levels, but I never tried to embarrass anybody or put anybody on front street. But I'm going to come and check them one on one, just like they will come and check me one on one. It was just so happen. I'm thinking that it's just the brothers, you know, it's just the brothers um, talking or whatever the case may be. So I was like, two, calm that shit down. <laughs> you doing all this loud talking and keeping the damn seat like you playing. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to but be funny. Everybody right? bust out <laughs> laughing. Hey, everybody. Like, everybody. Ah! Yo. Everybody laugh. Everybody laugh, but I'm not even paying attention to everybody laughing. I'm talking back, directly to two. Right. And he's right back in the focus. He yes. ain't saying nothing else about it. But I'm <laughs> so, in my feelings. You yes, know me? <laughs> I never knew that. I never knew that until years later. He ne- he didn't say nothing to me then. He gave me a look like I right, like like I right, mother. <laughs> And I'm thinking that we good because, once again, I'm really not paying attention to that we're on the bus with a it lot of people. It was the right thing to do, though. Yeah. It was the right thing to do. I appreciate that, man. I'm glad you said that. Now I feel better. <laughs> but still. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better now because, man, he been giving me grief about that ever since. It hurt oh, when your bro oh, G-check you, man. Yeah. Let me ask you this, though. We talk about people getting checked. What was the first time that you had that experience or that moment to where you knew it was a validating experience for you in the NFL and you knew this is my moment, this is where I belong, and I'm here to stay. I'm leaving when I say it's time to leave. I want to say this one moment at practice, but something woke me up. So I have to go with the game situation. But I'm going to give you the one that practices training camp. So I was supposed to get drafted at the time coming out high, you know, top 10 or whatever. So Mm -hmm. Carolina traded, gave it to Chicago. They got Brian Erlacher as the linebacker and all that other stuff. So they end up getting me second round. Um, So when we get there, they actually drafted Rashard Anderson also from uh, HBCU. Mm -hmm. But they drafted him at corner, but he couldn't play corner. Mm-hmm. So they awesome. tried to find somebody for this high draft pick. They just drafted right in front of me. Um, so when I get there, I didn't got the starting job. So it was Mike Miller and myself as the starting safety. The day of training camp, we're going against Detroit. And I think I picked the ball off or whatever just to play before that. So I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Um, come back, I think the next play, and I broke my hip. So I'm like, okay, I'm not ready. Mm. So they thinking my career is over with. I thought I was ready. I thought that that was that moment. And then we fast forward to <clears> when <throat> I finally do come back the following year. Mm-hmm. And um, the coach told me, he said, dear, if you come back in here walking, if you come back in here walking, it's like six months later when he just I just showed up and they wasn't expecting me to be on crutches or anything. He said, if you come back in here walking, you start next year. Mm. I'm thinking Coach Carlos is playing with Coach Los is playing with me. So I said, okay, Coach Man. All right. So it was my dude. I'm doing all kind of jail house. Never been to jail before. I'm doing all kind of jail house workouts <laughs> in the house because I can't go and do no physical therapy at the time. So I'm doing dips, squats on the on the wheelchair and all the other stuff. So I come back the following year. I mean, I come back and was able to practice and he kept his word. You know, he said, if a guy can overcome this, he got to be ready mentally and physically to play this game. Still not thinking I'm ready for the NFL. Still kind of nervous because of the hip. And we played Mr. Randy Moss. Mm. Mm. Chris Carter, Ed Reed, and all these boys up in Mm -hmm. Minnesota. And um, I had three picks that game. Give it to him. My first game in the NFL. To this day, it's still the record. Doug Evans and myself still hold the record as far as how many single game interceptions in Carolina history. So nice. that was the game that really let me know I was supposed to be here. And that was coming off of a hip injury and played against Moss. And I was actually matched on top of Moss 
most of the game, even was one on one in the back of the end zone a couple of times um, with him during that game. So I have to say that was the moment my first NFL game. Now, what about fast forward to when somebody served you the <laughs> business? Played the Falcons in bowling ball, Jamal mm-hmm. Anderson. Was it here in Atlanta or at Carolina? Here in Atlanta. I had about 50 some people in the stand. <laughs> and he broke free. And it was nothing but space. And it's just me by myself in the <laughs> middle of the field. And he can go either way. So yeah. I had to give my body up for he couldn't make a move. Because if I took a side, he was going to have so much fear. So I had to get in front of him and just get wide leg and just get <laughs> squared off. And I just had to take it. And I just held on. And he was like, how the hell you? And he told he got up. How the hell you held on? I'm looking at him like, man, I'm dizzy. I'm like, what are you about? Now, talking about how I held on. <laughs> I, I didn't even know I held on. <laughs> I didn't even know I held on. I just know I had to make this tackle because it's gonna be super embarrassing. It was embarrassed anyway because he ran me completely over. Ran me completely over, but. Uh, I ended up making the tackle, but that's what I said. Okay, this is a man's game here, man. <laughs> this is a man. It was that same year. It was that same year. We played Jamal Anderson here in, in the open field, and ooh, he trucked me so bad. <laughs> he trucked me bad, man. Yeah. Yes. One yes. day, one day you drinking the wine, the next day you stomping uh, the grapes. Man, yeah, I, I was stomping them hard. I was stomping. Them hard. <laughs> I had the best quality wine, man. The best quality. So I have to say, them was the two moments. I, I tell you what, man, we we appreciate the time that you gave us sure. because we know you could have spent your off day anywhere you wanted. You could have been there. But you chose to spend it with us, so we greatly appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Anytime. Next time, you got to bring back the hardware so we can see all of the championship rings so we can put up on the behind the mask. Take them behind the mask now. Okay, yeah, we can sure. definitely do that, man. You know, I know this is behind the mask when it comes to football, man, but y'all got such a great concept, man. Y'all need to go behind the mask in life, man. For sure. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Behind the Mask Podcast. Indulge, share, and subscribe to quality content. And we're everywhere. We're on YouTube. Make sure you scroll to the bottom. Click that little bell for notifications. We're on Google Play. We're on Spotify. And we're on Apple Music. Even on social media, we're going to make it easy for you. Follow at the BTM Podcast, for your weekly fixings. And remember, there's only one rule. There are no rules. Let's go behind the mask. mask.